months ago, Stephen Bartlett began designing and building his very own backpack flying machine. He plans to fly to France in the summer in one continuous flight. But first, he needs to get his machine into the air. Through a series of test flights, Steve aims to perfect his machine over the coming weeks. But with the weather deteriorating and mounting concerns about his design, Steve's dreams may not become a reality. This is my kitchen uh, where I do all my cooking. I, um, I like to cook things on toast and that's about it really. I'm not quite sure what the vodka is doing in there, but there's like a little bit of milk and that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, I've got some fish cakes in there, very unusual. If you come back next year, they'll probably still be here because I normally just have baked beans on toast. Right, this is the cupboard where I keep bits and pieces, um, paints, um, brackets, bite bits, sprays, drill bits, all sorts. Uh, nothing to do with cooking, so it's just like a little tool cupboard really. It's a very, very messy, it's just like electronic cupboard really. I do use it a little bit as a workshop um, because it's sort of, believe it or not, it's sort of cleaner and cleaner and tidier than my workshop. I do make quite a mess, but it doesn't matter so I don't cook here so makes no difference. The telly got here is a, like a schnook. Um, yeah, I used to really enjoy it, but now to be honest, if I crash it, I probably wouldn't rebuild it. I work for Southmead Hospital on the medical equipment, but for a career, I would like to work on designing aircraft. I'd like to work for something like some place like NASA or somewhere, somewhere like that, really. But um, unfortunately, to, you know, to do that, you've got to put loads and loads of effort in. Um, and I'm not really the type of person to put the, you know, the, the effort into to get that sort of job. So, you know, I've got to be content with uh, building my own flying machines. For me, I don't need a good, interesting job. I can, you know, just have an interesting hobby instead and just have a, a job which um, pays good enough to, you know, keep my hobby going. Before Steve can test his homemade machine, he must practice in a paramount he's more used to. In poor weather conditions such as these, Steve's piloting skills will be severely tested. Unlike what was predicted, it was a, a southeaster, this sort was of south or southeasterly, which, you know, if you've got problems, you would get blown out into the estuary. Today, Steve will be flying on the edge of the seven. Due to flying restrictions, there are only a few places he is permitted to take off and land. The wind was quite nice. It is, it is all about nine, ten miles an hour, which I quite like. I quite like the stronger wind. It makes it nice and easy to take off. Um, the, the you know the sort of advantages of the, the wind is the fact you can lift the shoot up. You you fly it like a kite. Uh, you lift the shoot up and you can sort of check none of the lines are tangled. being dragged because what happens you are sort of quite concentrating to sort of pull on on the line so because you're sort of so busy you ain't you ain't got time to be worried I've got rather a 
rather muddy and rather wet and looked rather silly. But um, I still enjoyed it. Monday, sunny. Tues- Tuesday's all right. Yeah, Tuesday's nice. It's sort of nine miles an hour. Um, later on, it gets a bit gusty. Since I was a kid, I just dreamt of the idea of being able to fly. Not only can I fly, I've got a chance to build my own flying machine as well, so it's been absolutely superb. But Harry Tess will reassure Steve that the harness is balanced to him and can take his weight whilst coping with the stresses of flight. Yeah, clear prop. Steve knows all too well the search for freedom can be both liberating and fatal. Julius is a, a good friend I, I flew with, and sadly he, he died on uh, after a flying competition in 2007. Julius is quite a special character in that if he, he came in and met you now, he'd all be sort of introducing yourself, shaking your hands. It, um, you know, he just sort of made everyone sort of feel relaxed and just a real nice character. Um, his flying was sort of spectacular. He, he, not like me at all, he had absolutely brilliant control. He, you know, when he when he died at first of all, I was in work and his, his dad phoned me up to tell me, so that's like a, you know, a real, a real big shock. Um, <laughs> you know, it, is, yeah, it's pretty, pretty horrible. But, um, yeah, so I'm getting that set again. It's the day of Steve's first flight in his machine, and with thoughts of his previous crash and knowing all too well what can happen when things go wrong, Steve's nerves are beginning to show. That day looks like a paramount, doesn't it? Are you confident with your first flight with your machine? That's a very good question. No. <laughs> um, hopefully it'd go right, a bit nervous, um, yeah when you sort of test fly anything it always makes you a bit nervous because you don't really know whether it's going to fly properly. It, it, it'll fly to some degree but I suppose at the end of the day, hopefully, if it doesn't fly you won't go off the ground in the first place. That's why I keep telling myself. Steve's paramotor is less powerful than he's used to, and with the lack of strong wind, Steve will struggle to take off. My hands are too cold to squeeze. Every minute that he stands with the 70 pound machine on his back, the harder it becomes. Different. 